Hey everyone, welcome to another great episode of Content Conversation. This one's been a long time coming. I've been excited to get Aleda Solis on the program. Aleda, I have a ton of respect for as an international SEO consultant, mobile SEO consultant, just everything SEO. Uh, she runs her own consultancy, Orienti, which I probably pronounced slightly wrong, but uh, overall, Google Aleda. She's amazing on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, everywhere, podcast. It's great stuff. So I, pr I appreciate you coming on, Aleda. No, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, of course, of course. You have uh, a lot of different, not a lot of different, but you've got some specialties that are really strong. And although we touched on international mobile, and one you talk about a lot is e-commerce. And you had a great presentation recently at MozCon, which everyone should check out. We'll link to it in the show notes on e-commerce e SEO horror stories which we're getting closer to, to Halloween, maybe by the time we publish this. But within that world, you uh, talked a lot about content specifically. So wanted to align it to, to what we, we talk about frequently here at Siege, which is the content side. We do work with a lot of e-commerce companies. So we'd love to hear your thoughts on how that specifically ties into e-commerce. One of the things that first came out and a lot of SEOs, I, I'm sure, see is on these on these company pages on the category pages you'll see a lot of bad copy buried on those category pages it's clearly only there for your seo no you user is ever using many of those or very frequently but you've suggested some better ways to do that. What are some ways people can improve that category page content? Yes, I guess that um, there was a time that uh, like many uh, of us in SEO realized that uh, uh, in order to better rank category pages and category pages, as we all know, as are some of those pages that actually are meant to rank for still very highly popular queries uh, already very commercially oriented at the mid of the funnel type of stage. So th these are very high valuable uh, for non-branded queries uh, to attract potential clients. And of course, if, if you only have categories with a list of products, even if it is a big list, um, at the end of the day, this will have like very thin content, very poor content. At the same time, whenever an SEO mentions uh, uh, the, the need of adding or featuring more content in these type of pages in order to uh, be more meaningful, more relevant, more descriptive. Um, this, this type of, I, I, I feel like a little bit of a fear of adding too much content because uh, the goal is to showcase the product in order to increase conversions, right? So the, there's always this back and forth of how you can add content without taking the 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 let's say the highlight uh, or the the attention from the product and so beyond this that of course that is why we need to work very very well with ux designers and to integrate content within the website or, or the different type of pages templates in a way that actually makes sense at that stage of the journey let's say like the workaround that is very very uh popular or has been very very popular is to, okay, very straightforward. We will add the content at the bottom. It will be like whatever content, just let's add keywords, like let's add information. At the end of the day, we end up seeing a lot of like informational type of uh, of information about the products, like like what are the products? And I, I guess that if the users are already there, they already know <laughs> what the products are. And, and, <laughs> yeah, I would, I would think. Yeah, yeah. indeed. And, and more about that, it, it will be on the other hand, more helpful to understand what are the different type of products and what are the best products for each use case or uh, the pros and cons of the different type of products that are listed at, in, that, in that page, for example. So they have better criteria to select them or filter the ones that are actually more useful for their particular need. So rather than doing this, like we have gotten for a long time, I think, away with the fact of let's add some bit of product to add relevant <laughs> relevance right, in, in, in some way. <laughs> uh, but of course, we know that Google is much more sophisticated. Google can understand better the intent and uh, it will identify that a lot of this content is crap. It's, it's not useful, really. It's not aligned with the intent of the user at the stage of the journey. Also, um, it's content that, of course, I understand why um, website owners uh, won't want to showcase at the top because it's not good for users. So my point here is that there's right. definitely a way to align um, 
the content that makes sense to actually communicate and, and showcase at this stage of the journey that will support the decision-making process of the potential customer at that stage of the journey that will also add relevance to the page and will help Google also to sort out of what the page is about and which are the queries that the page should be ranking for better, right? But, but to, in order to do that, that is a problem. SEO cannot be an, be an afterthought, cannot be, oh, let's enable and include at the, at the, the, at the below all the product listing and let's just add text there. No, the best listings are those that embed and integrate the content in a way that actually supports the journey uh, within the content listing. Um, and, um, and and yes, I, I understand that for many, many, many people who potentially will tend to like use a WooCommerce template or a Shopify uh, uh, template, whatever, like they, they don't have necessarily much flexibility many times in these type of pages, but it's better to invest a little bit on the UX, aligning with SEO best practices in order to make the most out of it. Also, a lot I have to say, uh, this has the opportunity, for example, to also make the most out of the content. For example, I love adding FAQs in 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 this type of pages, in category pages or facets pages or top listings like this, uh, or brand pages, clarifying the top doubts that users tend to have uh, about this type of products that you're featuring there. So you're like, like it's like win-win type of scenario. You're adding more content, it's, it's becoming more relevant. It, it actually will help to solve the main doubts that users will have at that stage of the journey. So very simple way to do it. Also, it will allow you to add uh, the FAQ page structure data, the schema markup in order to improve uh, the, the, the way that your results look through search features in, in search results. So yes, it's sort of like aligning, let's say, all the type of configurations of best practices with the, let's say, with the actual marketing and the product itself and the UX itself of, of the website. Nice. Yeah, I agree with all that. Uh, something that came top of mind while you're, you're talking about that is, are, are there examples or companies that come top of mind that do that well that we could link to or people could check out? Yes, unlike of, of, uh, what we can think, um, unfortunately, like if you think of the top retailers out, out there, uh, the, the biggest brands, I'm afraid, they can get away by the fact of not featuring necessarily that much of information in category pages or, um, because I, I imagine restrictions that, uh, many of these platforms will tend to have. However, we can see that the some, especially in my case, I work with a lot of international um, e-commerce websites and retailers. And uh, one of those that I that I know that is ranking very well and is actually one of uh, the top competitors of our clients and is doing very well. Like their, their listings are really really good. Are GB Hi Five uh, in Australia? You can go to their category pages and you can see how the way that they embed the content, integrate the content with their pages, how they add FAQs also within their listings. Uh, it, like, it's very natural. It feels really like content that supports the journey and supports the information that is showcased with the products. And then also if you go to my uh, speaker deck or slicer, also you will find uh, some other examples there of, uh, of category pages or some back websites to also to have a little bit of more or more inspiration right they don't need to be like the typical category page and for me like actually the best category pages some of the best product pages that i have seen are those that actually look like a landing page like their their their, their personalization and design um actually integrates well with the brand as it's not necessarily like the generic listing web i don't know 30 products or 50 products per page right um Another thing also regarding improving the content relevance in category pages, um, if at some point you don't have enough resources in order to invest in unique des descriptive content or FAQs in your, your listing, some of the most powerful ways to expand the content commercially well-aligned content in your category pages is just to show more products, right? It's shockingly, uh, like a lot of the challenges that e-commerce websites have when I start uh, to analyze, it's like they're like listing 20 products per page. Why? Why they will want to, even from a UX standpoint, uh, make your users to click on, on the next button or in the second pagination, right? And unfortunately, many of these paginated URLs are also non-crawlables because the load more or see more uh, links are implemented through JavaScript 
And these are not crawlable links many, many times. So uh, very straightforward. Uh, ensure to show as many products as you can, uh, balancing well the, the, the pitch experience, the speed, of course, and you can run also some A-B tests there to see the impact from a conversion and click-through rate in these pages, for example. But from, a, from an SEO standpoint, of course, showing more content, more product descriptions, longer descriptions per, per, per product too, that is also a very, very straightforward way to do it. Yeah, I like this example with uh, a lot of listings. Maybe maybe we won't make it a follow link, so we're not hurting your client uh, if we link to it in the show notes. <laughs> but but it it's a it's a good list and agree. Yeah, one thing I I like is that they you can see a lot of your for people listening to this, not watching it. You can see a lot of products in your peripheral vision on this site. A lot of e-commerce sites will kind of there's pros and cons. Uh, they have their filtering as a bar at the top of the page versus left uh, in the left rail, which is more common for e-commerce sites. But you see a good amount of products and that no doubt um, helps or I, I would guess helps them. So it's like a sidebar off of this. Obviously the natural extension is what you find on the category pages is those product pages. How about those? As you've mentioned in your presentations and previously, Maybe a lot of these aren't going to be generating the the fat uh, the head terms, but uh, they can generate a lot of long tail in some industries, and they're often very thin on client sites. What can people do to beef up their content on um, the these e commerce product pages? Yeah, and especially many of th- these are, of course, are not necessarily like the actual producers of of the products, but they are just uh, retailers, distributors, and the exact same product can be found across thousands or hundreds of thousands of websites out there and the description is exactly the same right so here what i always ask clients like how what is your unique selling proposition as a distributor right like actually like why they should buy uh, from you this product that can be found across this other thousand websites realistically because at the end of the day this is what should be reflected in uh within the website especially in the product page like do, do, what do you offer? Do, do you have some particular know-how, additional, um, I don't know, like warranties, uh, like perfect type of community, um, additional information, whatever else that you can provide uh, there to the user to showcase why they should buy from you <laughs> at that stage of the journey, the final stage, right? Like the, where they are going to add your your their credit card. So you should even like UX from a UX standpoint or a design standpoint, it should be very straightforward to, to do it. So it's like, what can you do in, in that page to show that it is you, the, 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 the store that where, where potential customers should buy. Right. So, um, and align everything else with that. Uh, I'm afraid that many websites out there, they are not even sure of their unique selling proposition. And that is very, very hard. Otherwise, it's about enhancing the oh, We have like an actual community in, uh, uh, like in Facebook many times even, right? And, and there's a lot of questions and answers. So, okay, let's bring all of these questions and answers and help and additional information and showcase it per product. So even if you have your little description that you don't have the means to edit or to expand, at least you have a good Q&A, uh, 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 good questions and answers, uh, a good deal of reviews if you have been already doing this for a while and uh, where you excel is customer support and and fast delivery for example uh showcase that in the reviews allow the users to review the products and to leave good low reviews and like incentivize them by giving coupon codes or discounts um or whatever you can in order to incentivize the reviews as as as, as soon as a user or a customer has bought from you send uh, a follow-up email asking for our reviews and they will have a c- certain discount after uh, in, in the next purchase, things like that, right? So it's trying to identify what can be pulled and, and leveraged from the unique selling proposition as a business uh, in order to showcase it there. Also, uh, there are many, many tools nowadays, um, AI-based uh, copy content generators that I have to say that if you overuse them or if you use them in autopilot, I'm afraid that the the problem is how you use them, right? Like, uh, unfortunately, a lot of, I believe that 
websites truly believe like because the slogans of some of them are like this like content in autopilot or generate like AI, AI generated <laughs> yeah, content. Yeah. No, no, maybe not the best framing. Yeah, yeah. 100%. But I have found that especially at scale, especially when you're starting and you don't have that many resources, it can be a great way. For example, if you know that the copy that you have is exactly the same as thousands of other websites to rephrase the copy and that this copy can be then validated by a, by a real human, please. That is also a real human that actually knows the product. Uh, I believe that Google is also more and more, um, let's say, enhancing this part of, of their, their search engine at, at the end of the day. A lot of their latest updates have been aimed and focused on uh, product uh, websites, of course, uh, especially oh, it. Yeah, not yeah. necessarily on necessarily on, on, on the, the manufacturers, <laughs> but a, a lot of especially the affiliate type of websites that literally many, many times will uh, generate content purely to, to rank and resell the product when they haven't actually tested the product. They don't even have the product themselves, right? So, but so like that is the extreme. However, I have to say that especially if you actually sell the product and you have the product uh, and uh, you have certain know-how of the product should be about showing it in the content. So of course, like you can leverage this these tools and actually many of these tools are already well integrated and have integration well with Shopify, for example. We we have um I don't know Copysmith um plugin for Shopify, uh also Wiglot uh for uh, for Shopify for automated translations. Uh also whenever you, you need to generate content in other languages. But that doesn't mean that you don't need an actual native speaker who has real know-how of the product or this line of products to validate, verify that what is actually written there makes sense and is aligned to what you are offering, of course. So it's good to, let's say, accelerate the process, uh, not to leave it in autopilot. <laughs> and, and then on the other hand, of course, it's about marketing at the end of the day and sure to make the most out of your product, your unique slim proposition and uh, enhance it uh, with, the different type of configurations that we know that we can make the most out of it uh, from a, from an SEO standpoint, but with the reviews, ratings, for example, well, it's also with structured data, et cetera, et cetera. All this will add on for sure. So in the, in the same wavelength as the category pages, we'd love to hear on the product page level, what are, what's a good example of a site that's doing a great job of what you were talking about? So there's this website that is called Manscaped and they have product pages that actually look as if they were uh, landing pages, right? It, they don't look necessarily as a, as product pages. So as a, I, I find them to be particularly attractive, unique. Uh, the products look beautiful, big photos, uh, which were also like reviews, um, Q and A. So everything in in a in a in a page. Also, they have all the complementary products that they recommend users actually the one thing that i i i actually dislike from what i'm seeing right now in the page that i just sent to you uh, is that they have a eu version uh european version to target all of europe and i actually i am actually seeing the spanish version within the eu version and uh it will be much better to have had like a spain version or a french france version or a or a or a german version etc rather than having e an eu version because the the english version of this page um I'm afraid that it will be very, very hard to geolocate uh, or, or to ensure that doesn't compete with the English version that they also have for the US, for example. So the, there are things to improve in this, in this particular, let's say, configuration. But let's say that from a content standpoint and uh, the way that they showcase this, uh, their products is is very very attractive, and uh, they ensure that the, the previous the previous are. are content rich and are relevant uh in a way that actually like is, is appealing to the to the user at the same time what do you think about the in the question and answer area here uh i forget the name of this configuration but have you seen the q a area where it's um expandable um table where uh do you know what i'm talking about what is the name of uh, the accordions or or no yeah accordions, accordions. yes yeah how do you feel about those for search where it's kind of hidden text? I know Google apparently is better at crawling those these days. What have you seen? Do you recommend that? Do you not recommend so that? So as much as possible, I'll, I always recommend um, um, clients to always show the content 
uh, that actually they want to have more weight uh, from from a search standpoint as as uh, as they show to to the user, right? Because at the end of the day, we will always try to replicate what is visible, highly visible to the user above the fold, et cetera, et cetera, has more chances to not be left out, has more chances to be taken into consideration to the other hand, right? But but then also, uh, it has to do also how it is implemented. Uh, a lot of these accordions can be implemented many times through JavaScript. If you overuse or you rely on Java, uh, client-side rendering of, of JavaScript that requires a click event in order to load and is not by default uh, found in in the HTML or, or, or in the DOM even, well, it, it will be harder for Ga- uh, Google to index um, or not possible at all. On the other hand, if you use HTML and CSS and the content is always, always there and that requires a, a, a click uh, in order to be showcased to the user, visible to the user. Uh, Google has many times in the past uh, mentioned that is already okay, uh, especially because of the first index, and they acknowledge the uh, need of not having the chance to always show all the content uh, by default because of the the con- like visibility restrictions that we have on mobile, right? So um, as much as possible, if, if, if it is something very, very important, show it. Uh, and ensure that it's shown. If it is not possible, at least that the way that you use this accordions, um, you, you you should you should ensure that it is implemented in a way that the text, the content, is actually there in the in the HTML that um, doesn't require JavaScript client side rendering or an event in order to be um, accessible. Yeah, great great tips. And as you were talking about that, I was googling uh, Manscapes accordion and their content is not indexed so do, do not do it in their fashion um, yeah potentially but it looks good by the way sorry sorry that i was realizing that i i gave you i i gave you the example potentially and i totally random randomly went to that to that particular product page oh my god potentially potentially look for another not necessarily um so so let's say risky risky product <laughs> <laughs> They're well known. They have a good marketing team. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. Sorry, all good. Uh, it was not even the one that I that I that I included in the presentation. I just went to the first one in the drop down. It was that. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know. Not safe for work, <laughs> or you can add a tag here. Not safe for work. Yeah, That's yeah, product yeah, yeah. Features. It's relatively <laughs> safe for work, but uh, it's they they have a good marketing team. I know they have a SEO team as well. So. Uh, clearly like doing some some things strongly which um it's awesome well we talked on it a little bit on on ai and um using ai these tools to kind of like accelerate content is there any other applications you're seeing a uh, e-commerce sites do that i mean i generally am with you that i think for category and product pages that's like one of the main applications where these tools can be valuable i don't know as much on like an informational blog page it's gonna be as like good enough to do it. It doesn't hurt to have it kind of sped up with those tools, but are there any other like applications you've seen or anything else you'd add to kind of the, the AI conversation with content? From an AI standpoint, I, I like in my case that I, that I work with uh, quite a few international websites. I have seen actually a really, really good use for, for example, from applica- applications like DeepL for multilingual content. Right, the quality of, of the translation is top notch, or the ones from Wiglot, for example, that also support the multilingual uh, type of configuration. Um, these are great. They are, yeah, they, they leverage uh, um, artificial intelligence and and uh, and uh, the accuracy of the content, especially what I have tested it myself with my own content from from English to Spanish or Spanish to English is is really 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 good i mean you should do certain type of additions especially because of let's say the way that that um like it's more of like editorial guidelines or tone of voice of the brand things like that but i truly believe that these tools can really really accelerate the process of uh internationalization of money online stores which is something that a lot of um, e-commerce have gone through uh, is a process that a lot of e-commerce websites have gone through in order to be able to uh, maximize and scale their, their their revenue in in the last few years, of course. So I will highly highly recommend uh, them to rather than and and I know that 
potentially some linguists out there or translators out there was like, what is she saying? But realistically, the, <laughs> the quality of these translation tools have improved massively in the last few years. Even even Google Translate, right? And these are better, definitely, than Google Translate. And and of course, these are very well integrated in, uh, in uh, Shopify, also for for um, WooCommerce, for and in WordPress, uh, they have plugins and a- APIs that can be used to integrate with them. Nice, makes sense. That that's I was about to ask you what tools, but most of the CMSs are doing this by default, is what you're saying. Is that accurate? Yeah, not not by default, but they but they have add-ons. Indeed, they have add-ons for them. Uh, for example, DeepL has an API and can be also there's a plugin I believe for so for WordPress, so it can use be used for WooCommerce. Uh, Weglog has a, an app within or plugin within within Shopify. So they they are very well integrated with the most popular uh, e-commerce platforms, indeed. Nice. Yeah, something else I saw you cover in the presentation that I liked a lot and, and kind of ran into some common pain points I see is that very often people will mismap content to intent. Like someone might make a page that should be informational, transactional, or vice versa. And you had a great kind of spreadsheet or cheat sheet to, to help people think through that. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about that keyword mapping and, and who should be doing it and what, what the the value prop is there? Yes. You know what? Realistically, this has become harder, harder with, with time. If I, I'm, I have done this analysis in the past uh, with some of my longer, um, um, older clients. And if we go and take a look at the SERPs, let's say, uh, four years ago, if you search for um, headphones or wireless he- headphones or in-ear headphones, whatever, a little bit of more longer descriptive than the, the head term, right? But still with a clear already, let's say, product de- driven or commercially driven in 10, I will say, like four years ago, five years ago, you will see a lot of category pages uh, ranking them. Nowadays, you see a couple of category pages and then a few reviews of the best uh, in your headphones from review websites. Uh, then you see the, the, the video carousel of video reviews from YouTube. Et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's more and more blended. So of course, the, the, there will be some very obvious cases of product queries, product related queries of by a certain product name, but then we will have a lot of like this mid of the funnel opportunities there where I will highly, highly, highly recommend anybody to take a look at the SERPs. Take a look at what is the share of the search results um, visibility share, uh, real estate uh, that is actually of category pages, how many of these are, are reviews, how many of these are, are listings or guides, and optimize accordingly. I have to say that nowadays, pretty much for all of my clients and analysis that I have done and seen the blend that some top category query related queries will have, for each category, we will also have a counterpart of informational content too so you can yeah, yeah, if you rank with it you cannot rank with it you will rank with the other ones but and at the end of the day it's also natural more natural because people will tend to link a lot at the end of the day informational resources rather than transactional ones also you want to build and establish authority and show um, that you are an opinion leader and that you can definitely review and analyze the trends going on with this line of products that you offer and uh, what are the stats and the most sold ones, whatever. So you, you have the opportunity have there to have fresh uh, informational content also that has a counterpart, of course, that, are so, that is also commercial. So I will ask more and more uh, e-commerce and online stores that only don't necessarily focus only. And of course, I, 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 I know that they want to prioritize uh, commercially driven uh, uh, queries with their main web structure, uh, top, top, like home pages, top categories, subcategories, facets, um, uh, brand names, for example. Like I understand they want to prioritize them, uh, but there's only so much I believe also that they can bring in terms of uh, authority and in terms of of um, popularity at the end of the day, because most of those resources that will gain backlinks, will be informational ones. So, in, for example, I, I think that 
REI is doing this very, very well. They have a lot of guides of how, for example, camping 101 and how they can, people can use the products that they they sell in their stores for camping. It's, it's amazing. It's useful. So I, I think about that, about the experience that you want to provide with your, to, with your products to users. And indeed, a good, ma- a good ma- mapping is, is, uh, is uh, fundamental at the start to take a look very well at what are the type of pages, what is the format of these pages, and what you need to do with your content in order to be able to be considered the best one from those already top-ranked ones. But also take a look at a little bit of the blend. More and more, you will see a little bit of a higher blend, and that should also um, give you an input of your content strategy as a whole, right? Rather than focusing only on optimizing your your main web structure, of your top categories, subcategories, or facets, and that's it. That's good advice. One one spinoff question of that you made me think of is historically in the past, I I might have even recommended this where you'd have a category and you would try to prevent cannibalization where you had two topics that hypothetically could rank for the same thing. You might want to just not go after it. But now I agree with you that they're seeing more and more blended SERPs. Is that sort of more of a thing of the past where it's really about maybe you can sort of go after the same thing, but you just need to have two different, maybe it needs to be transactional and informational and that's the differentiation. How do you think about like cannibalization of keywords and, and things like that today? What it will be like, what it is, of course, it's fundamental is to ensure that you like, you know, the purpose of each content, right? And the, the one of your categories and your listing is obviously to offer the, the, the product information when the user is already pretty much ready to buy and just needs to sort out the color or the particular model, but they already want to buy from you. The, 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 the other the other uh, content that you create as a guide for videos or like going through the different options are um, of users that are not necessarily there still uh, at that stage of the journey, right? They are more of like even a little bit of more discovery stage. And of course, uh, for those type of guides, you also will want to have potentially pillar pages and these will be able to rank or target even broader terms of topics about your different product lines too. So you th- I, I believe that um, Google is already sophisticated enough uh, to understand the intent and the goal of this different type of, of contents uh, that even if they cover the same topics, the, the intent and the focus is completely different. One is much more informational, the other is much more commercially driven. They can both refer to each other, by the way. like I have also seen uh, amazingly good and, and, and um, outstanding category pages that even embed at some point within the content some some product videos uh or reviews and refer to their to their informational pages and vice versa right so this can both support each other um also i have seen more results uh nowadays with the indented search results from google in google uh, that is not only one but but two when google is not necessarily that that sure i have seen that happening a lot in com- in in uh and um, uh, online store e-commerce websites with uh, very similar categories and subcategories sometimes. Uh, and then also sometimes also with the, the review guides and the top category pages for certain type of queries. Uh, I, I guess that good for this ambiguation, right? But, but at, at the end of the day, I believe that as long as you ensure that it's very clear what's the purpose of each content, um, at its the purpose is not the same. The stage of the journey is not the same. No, sorry, the audience might not even be the same, but the different stages that is okay to to create them. Makes sense. So, sort of what I'm hearing and definitely agree with is default to user experience, and kind of the SEO thing will take care of itself. Is this article should make sense to exist as informational? This should this page should expect to exist as transactional and you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't lose sleep at night if, if those two things are, are sort of targeting the same topics. Well, great. Uh, yeah, there's been some great tips on e-commerce content, marketing generally. Is there anything else in this realm, tools, tips, ideas we didn't talk about that you'd leave people with? Yes, I, I will say that is, it's funny because it's true that we have spoken a lot of uh, about content, but a lot of content issues are generated many, many times because of the lack of technical configuration or the misconfiguration 
of, uh, of the content. So for example, for, uh, speaking about, about e-commerce websites, right? Like websites that still today will uh, feature the same products through different categories or subcategories and generate different URLs for each one of them and end up having uh, content duplication issues because same products, different URLs. Uh, and that can be a simple configuration to just like lift the parent category of, of it all or even not adding if there's too much of a risk and too, too many uh, products to, to be assigned to way too many categories, not assign the category in the URL necessarily. So this type of very support config configurations that I guess didn't happen because there wasn't an SEO involved at the, at the start. Uh, then also a lot of campaign pages, uh, season, like seasonality pages, like, I, I don't know, like Valentine's uh, campaigns or Valentine's Day or Black Friday that next year, like you add the, the year within the URL and next year you need to redirect it again. And sometimes are even deleted after a few years, this type of things like, very straightforward, like I, I, I call it the structural content configuration, internal search results that are still indexable in certain cases and end up cannibalizing and competing actual categories or subcategories. So this is stuff that is technical SEO one-on-one that uh, I believe that before, let's say, doing any effort and putting a lot of effort uh, on, on your content, like ensure to have a good structure, a good base that is correctly indexable and it can actually rank, right? Um, still, a lot of stores, for example, I have seen that, oh, after the second uh, category, a lot of these filters, call filters, by default, they, they generate URLs that are not indexable and they are not internal link with follow links or global links even. Um, why? In some circumstances, you will find that, yes, these product pages, uh, color generated, you don't have enough supply, you don't have enough products to showcase, uh, so you have very thin content, you won't satisfy the user's uh, need, the user demand, and then on the other hand, the user demand is, is, is minimum, right? It's about supply and demand at the end of the day. Then there are not that many people searching for the these products uh, through the different colors, so it doesn't make sense for you to index this facet or index this filter page, but you might have another or many other product lines where the products is one of the main characteristics that people are searching for every single time. So for example, especially I, I, I always give this example of Yeezy uh, sneakers, like go and take a look at how many times <laughs> the black ones or the gray ones or the green ones are, are searched, like more than many uh, main categories of, of, the, uh, of, of, of many of the uh, sneakers, right? So you cannot overlook uh, filter indexation just because certain, I don't know, uh, rule of thumb, right? It's important to always validate uh, supply and demand of your products and configure the pages indexing accordingly and crawling and internal linking accordingly, right? So I will say that again, at the end of the day, technical configuration here will should support uh, the, the, the content needs, the promotion needs, and, and what you want to offer to the users based on what you want to sell or you have to sell um, and your business goals. And then on the other hand, the search behavior of the user and the needs of the user. Completely with you there. One thing we do in our, our, our contracts with the clients, we are so content focused and we say this, these results are only going to be achieved if you're technically continue to invest in your on page and technical infrastructure, because if you're broken there, no amount of great content is going to help lift that. Um, and especially it can be present in e-commerce as you're well aware in terms of the technical difficulties that come up with these very big sites. Well, thank you, Leda. This was great. Uh, super uh, helpful conversation for anyone who hasn't heard of you. I'm sure most listening to this have, <laughs> but definitely check out your newsletter. Uh, you're uh, Leda on, on Twitter as well. LinkedIn, also a great follow. Um, her, her YouTube interviews are also awesome. So really appreciate you coming on and, um, yeah, great conversation. No, thank you very much for the opportunity. It was a really nice conversation indeed. And, uh, we'll be happy if you have any questions or doubts, I'm, uh, we'll be more than happy to, to follow up over Twitter. I'm very active there too.